What's up Grizzlies? Welcome to the third episode of Genius Wired for the 2017-2018 school year. Second semester sure is flying by. Yeah, I can't believe it's almost spring break already. I'm sure everyone's looking forward to some much needed rest. That's true, especially considering how hard some of the students we are featuring on today's show have been working lately. But that's not all we've got coming up. Our reporter sat down with Mr. Prez to get your questions answered about the upcoming One Lunch Initiative. I'm Seth Bennett. And I'm Jean Luther. Genius Wired starts now. First, let's meet one student in Grassfield who has a passion for music. Here's reporter Taylor Maxwell with the story. Maddie Burning is 17 years old and she's a senior in high school. I can play the ukulele, the piano, and a little bit of guitar. Music means a lot to me because it helps me express words that I can't like say or explain. When I was younger, I watched these girls cover songs on YouTube and it made me want to do that and sing like them. My parents are my biggest supporters as well as all my friends. Maddie started singing as a baby. She, um, I've always known her to be a singer. Um, she walked around the house and would play and do all of her activities, chores, whatever and has always sang, so I'm um, not a particular age, but um, I've always known her to be singing from the time she could talk. Music affects me a lot because when I listen to like new music or a song that I really like, it can easily affect my mood in a positive way and it really can change my day. Wow, Maddie sure has a lot of talent. But we know a lot of other students too, too. So we sent our reporters, Chloe the Makos and Tiana Neville, out to find them for this new segment. What's up, Grizzlies? I'm Tiana Neville here with Chloe Demakis. Today we're gonna be asking random students to finish the lyrics to popular songs. Let's get to it, guys. Do you slide on all your nights like this? Do you try on all your nights like this? I might put the spotlight on the slide. Yeah, good job. All right. Ah! <laughs> I threw a wish in the well. Don't ask me, I'll never tell. I looked to you as it fell. And now you're in my way. I trade my soul for a wish. Pennies and dimes for a kiss. I was looking for this, but now you're in my way. Woo! Good job. Okay. <laughs> I'll be there for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so the next one is for you. I've been moving calm, don't start no trouble with me. I grew up at 6 a.m. to cuddle with you, baby. Got a girl from the south side. Got braids in her hair. First time I seen her walk by. And I about fell by my chair. Had to get her number. Took me like six weeks. Woo! Good job! That concludes our Finish the Lyrics segment. Thanks for watching, Grizzlies. Had to get her number. Took about six hey, weeks. Seth, we're back on air. Oh, sorry. I was really enjoying that game. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> but do you know who else was enjoying a different game? Who? Fifth grade students at Grassfield Elementary. Here's Tristan Swartz. On February 28, 2018, at Grassfield High School, fifth grade students from Grassfield Elementary played teachers in an annual basketball game to raise funds for Relay for Life. It was a great experience. Um, I love working with kids, being around kids, so to be able to, you know, take some time off and uh, have a fun game of basketball is a very good experience. Although he's still a high school senior, Levesque took on the role of a teacher as part of the Teachers for Tomorrow program. He helps out with Miss Evie's class at Grassfield Elementary. Teachers for Tomorrow is basically where you intern at an elementary school, either Grassfield or Cedar Road Elementary, and uh, you spend pretty much all the first block uh, just helping out uh, one of the teachers there and uh, helping out the kids. One of those kids was Dylan Swartz, who enjoyed challenging the teachers. I think the game went pretty well. 
We definitely got some early points at the beginning. Me and my team definitely could have had improved on was passing and shooting, dribbling, and keeping the ball in front of us because that's been getting away from us a couple times. My thoughts and opinions basically is just to uh, stay cool, calm, and be chill. Staying calm helps students become an even matchup against the teachers. The game ended with a 37 to 37 tie in overtime. They were a good, good tough opponent. Reporting for G News Wired, I'm Tristan Swartz. Did you see those kids balling? Yeah, that seemed like a great event. And those cheerleaders were so cute, maybe they'll be a part of our cheer team one day. And if they are, they'll have to be willing to put in work during the offseason. Even though the official season doesn't start for four more months, the three-time state Grassfield Varsity cheer team is already preparing for the upcoming season. Conditioning is usually held Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from um, the time we get out of school, which is like 3.40 to either 5 or 5.30. When we're inside, we do a warm-up called Upstairs, Downstairs, and that's when we run downstairs, all the quads, and then we go up the stairs and run all the quads upstairs, and then we come back to the gym, and then we do um, circuit workouts. Conditioning in advance just makes it a little bit easier. Obviously, it doesn't help them with the technique of the tumbling and all of that, but it definitely helps with them being able to physically endure it longer and to be able to do a little bit more advanced stunts that require more physical strength. Members of the Grassfield Varsity Cheer Team also appreciate the benefits of conditioning. The training and during conditioning on the offseason really does help you because when you're coming into the routine, it helps build up your endurance and prepare you for the full routine that you do. These routines have led the Grassfield Varsity Cheer Team to three state championships in the last four years. Coaching a team on their journey to their fourth state championship is pretty intense. Um, it's got a lot of pressure. You know, if you're not winning, then it's considered not a successful season. To increase their chances for another state championship, the Grassford Varsity Cheer Team will continue to work hard in the offseason. For Genie's Wired, I'm reporter Brittany Lewis. Those cheerleaders work hard during their season. I couldn't imagine learning all those moves. Our G-Steppers are another group that work hard memorizing steps. Recently, they put on a performance to honor African Americans during times of war. Here's Seth Bennett and Tegan Conwell with more on the story. Normally, the step team performs at a pep rally or a basketball game. But on February 28th, they were in front of the school for a different reason. To honor African Americans in times of war, the Grassfield step team put together a presentation that included information, public speaking, and of course, stepping. Preparing for this event was very fun. We came up with multiple steps and different songs to join in with our steps. I decided to join the step team because it's always been something that I loved. I've been doing it since I was in sixth grade. We get to show our empowerment for African Americans and Black History Month. <laughs> I decided to join Step Team because my friend told me to do it with her, so I was just going to do it for fun and ended up liking it. To add to the performance, Harmony Blackstock provided information on African Americans who served our country. He flew 144 combat missions, 65 over North Vietnam, as a member of the 557th Tactical Fighter Squadron at Cam Ranh Bay, Vietnam. I'm reporter Seth Bennett with photographer Tegan Conwell. Thank you for your support as we conclude Black History Month 2018. It was really interesting how the G Steppers paid tribute to African Americans in such a unique way. Recently, Grassfield students also paid tribute to the 17 victims of the Parkland High School shooting. On February 14th, 2018, the students and teachers of Majority Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, had their lives taken too early. To mark the one-month anniversary of the Parkland shooting, at 10 a.m. on March 14th, Senior Class President Seth Greiling was joined by 434 other students who walked out of their classes for 17 minutes to honor the victims. Schools around the country handled the event in a variety of ways. Chesapeake Public Schools encouraged students to participate with parental consent.
they were talking about it and they they didn't they wanted a the students to have a say in the entire ordeal but at the same time they didn't want students to get penalized with absences and stuff. The Chesapeake Public Schools Superintendent Dr. Roberts along with all seven Chesapeake High School principals and the supervisor of the Chesapeake Career Center have allowed us to walk out of school for 17 minutes today during school hours to stand with others across the country to show support for Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida and the 17 victims who lost their lives. Carmen Shintra, age 16, and Peter Wang, age 15. Along with a moment of silence for the Parkland victims, the walkout served another purpose. The walkout is to promote safer schools and a safe environment that students, teachers, and staff can uh, go to school and not worried about uh, being harmed in any way. I think especially the younger kids, maybe not so much us, but the younger kids are worried to go to school. While some immediate changes to school safety are being addressed now, the high school students who participated are hoping younger generations don't have to walk out of school again and instead feel safe in their classrooms. Because 17 is enough! This has been reporter Madison Concannon. It was really inspiring to see so many students at Grassfield stand up for what they believe in. The students leading this protest really put their time and effort into running the event. Students are also putting in time to plan One Lunch, a new activity at Grassfield. One Lunch is a data-driven program um, that has roots all through Virginia, but also nationally uh, in places like Texas. But basically it is a one hour lunch period, very similar to the hour long lunch and activity period that colleges have. Um, to give the entire school a one hour lunch and activity period so that they can have lunch and then choose various activities throughout the school. In order to plan these activities, a committee of teachers met after school in the forum to come up with ideas. While the event will provide new opportunities for students, there will still be rules. Dues and you cannot leave campus, so that's the big one. Um, it's an hour long activity period within the building. Um, and then do's are do eat lunch, but then do choose activities and get involved. Um, it's student driven, so we'll certainly survey students to figure out the activities uh, that students want to participate in. Um, but our teachers will be there for remediation to provide opportunities to make up tests and assignments um, or just get extra help on a concept that you don't understand. And it's actually a student run. Some of the activities that that we foresee happening will be karaoke in the chorus room, open gym where students can play volleyball or basketball, our weight room will be open, classrooms will be open where teachers will have opportunity for quiet study time or specific help in a certain subject. A teacher, the Sammers may then get the whole one lunch off that day because with that we'll also make sure that, that there's opportunities. Uh, for students to be in the cafeteria eating lunch. We'll also expand the areas that we allow students to eat lunch because we know everyone can't, can't fit in there. So the outside food courts will be open, we'll allow food, we'll have extra trash cans throughout the building to allow students to eat in various locations on the chairs and the foyers and so forth as well to make sure that we use the entire 344,000 square foot building. With photographer J.C. Waltner, I'm reporter Ashton Huggins for G News Wired. Our first One Lunch event will be held April 13th. That's all we have for today's episode. We hope you've enjoyed getting an inside look at what's been happening throughout our school. I'm Seth Bennett. And I'm Jean Luther. Have a great spring break, Grizzlies. Get her number. To, I cannot, that was so bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? You can't. <laughs> He's the a good. Hey, yeah, you're like, it was sassy. Uh, did you see those kids balling? I, I, forgot, we had, I forgot we had to say stuff after yeah, it. I, I forgot we had to say stuff.